The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents No Greater Love, starring Vanessa Brown and Reed Hadley. Frank Leahy is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The power of prayer isn't something to dream about. It's a practical part of everyday life. Your life and my life and a practical world of everyday affairs. And what we need today is practical men practical men who pray, men who realize that no matter how big they think they are, they still need God's help. We all agree the world would be a better place if we had more happiness in the homes. So let's be practical about making our homes happy. Let's get down to a very serious and important business in our lives. Let's not do a lot of talking about making the world better. Let's make our own homes our own children better. And there's no better way of doing it than by gathering our family together every day for family prayer. Let's be practical. Let's pray as a family. Our scene, the Manhattan office of a famous eye specialist. And, well, my eyesight started darkening up about six months ago. Been getting worse ever since. Hmm. Strange. Very strange. Tell me, Mr. Bailey, your mother and father, they ever have trouble with their eyes? Mom never had on a pair of specs in her life. Died about three years ago. And your father? Oh, Dad. He died when I was a little kid. As I remember it, he didn't see a team of horses coming and stepped right in front of them. But why? Extraordinary case. Very. Might possibly be hereditary. What might possibly be hereditary? Tell me straight, Dr. Walton. What are you leading up to? Mr. Bailey, you're... I've got to know the truth. You're going blind. Blind? Increasing pressure on the optic nerves induced by the curious bone structure. At most, you've got a year. Blind. But I've got to be able to see. I've got to. Not just for the reasons other people have... I'm a newspaper reporter. Do you realize what that means? Yes, I do. Without eyes, I'll be nothing. Doc, you've got to do something. I've got to have eyes. I can operate. Thank God. Yes, I can operate. But the chances, I should say, will be 50-50. Oh. Even so, what have I got to lose? As long as I'm going blind anyway. You've got your life to lose, Mr. Bailey. Doc. It's a delicate operation, a daring one. Nothing like it has ever been tried. But I still say you'll have a 50-50 chance. 50-50? If the operation succeeds, your vision will be as good as ever. And if it doesn't... If it were only myself I had to think of, I wouldn't hesitate a second. But I've got a wife with a baby coming. I understand. Long as I'm alive, I'll manage to do something somehow. I'll keep going until they don't need me so much. Then I'll take that 50-50 chance. It won't be a 50-50 chance. Not if you wait too long, Mr. Bailey. Every year you put it off will lengthen the odds against you. Still doesn't change matters, Doc. I'll wait. Where's that false alarm of a newspaper reporter? Somebody find me that guy, Bailey, before I fire the lot of you, him included. You looking for me? Well, if it isn't Mr. Bailey in person. Where in Sam Hill have you been? Get into my office and start explaining. Right. And quit bumping into things. Sorry. Now then, you realize the Lusitania was sunk? The biggest story in a lifetime is broken. Bigger even than that Archduke business at Sarajevo. This hits us. People right here in this bailwick are on that Lusitania. And where were you when I want you? Well, you see, Ransom, I was... I won't believe you anyway, so quit wasting time. Go out and get me a local angle on that story. Who from here was on the boat? And the why, where, when, and what of it all? Well, don't stand there like a cigar store Indian and get Ransom, going. Listen, Ransom. I... I'm quitting. Quitting? Who says you're quitting? 
You've got a lot of gall, you misprint of a human being. If it's a raise you want, more money, say so. Only don't come barging in you here You know it say... isn't because of more money, Ransom. You know I've turned down plenty of offers from other papers for lots more dough. Then why are you leaving? Now look, Bailey, you're a great reporter, yes, but this sheet gave you your chance. You were just a kid hustling papers when we took you in here. I myself hoisted you from copy boy to reporter, and now you're walking out. I started as a newsboy and became a reporter. Why can't I become a newsboy again? Yes. Ah, you batty, don't stand there mumbling. Ransom, I'm going blind. Within a year, I'll be blind. What? You're, you're kidding. No. Blind? Gosh, fella, if, if there's anything I can do... There is. Headlines have been my life. And you've given me an idea how they can stay that way. Get me a good corner where I can sell papers. You sell papers? Oh, that can't be. It's got to be. But, Harry, You'd you sell can't... papers to feel that kid of yours, wouldn't you, Ted? Well, I can do the same for mine. Well, that's right. You've got a kid coming. A boy. It'll be a boy, Ted. And even if... Well, even if I never can get around to reporting again, he'll make up for what I miss. I'll bring him up to be a reporter. A great reporter. No greater than his old man, Harry, he couldn't be. Extra, extra, Persing chases Pancho Villa into Mexico. Ladies, extra. Harry, this is Ted Ransom. Yeah, I, I recognize your voice, Ted. Just dropped by to offer congratulations on the baby. Hope you weren't too disappointed that it was a girl. I was at first, but... Well, a girl can be a newspaper reporter, too. And Katie, that's what we call her. She'll be the greatest newspaper woman of them all. War declared. The United States declares war on Germany. President Wilson... Oh, so well, here you are. Doc. It is Dr. Walton, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Bailey. Decided yet to let me operate? To see you again at a time like this. Why, history's being made every hour and every headline. Oh. No, Doc. My little girl's barely a year old. I've still got a long time to wait. The war's over. Armistice signed. Extra! Happy Extra! What's the matter, Harry? You don't look as cheerful as you sound. Nothing wrong with the baby, I hope. Now, Ted, the little girl's fine, fine. But the wife, she's been ailing. I'm awfully worried, Ted. Daddy. Yes, Katie, darling. Did Mommy go away? Far, far away. And won't she never come back? No, Katie. But you've got to be a brave little girl. Remember, you always promised her you'd be a brave little girl. Yes, Daddy. You know what else Mommy made me promise? What, darling? Once I saw her crying, and I went to bring the medicine. But Mommy said that wasn't what hurt. She said she was crying because nobody would take care of you if she didn't. She... she said that. But I told Mommy I'd take care of you, Daddy. And then she hugged me tight and made me cross my heart and promise. Bless you, Katie. And I will take care of you, Daddy. Always. Sure you will, you precious darling. We'll take care of each other. We'll manage. The two of us. Won't we, Katie? We'll manage. President Harding dies. Calvin Coolidge sworn in. Read all about it. I'll take one. Doc, it's you. I didn't think you'd remember me, Mr. Bailey. You know, it's more than eight years now. And every year counts against your chances of ever seeing again. I don't care anymore. I mean, like I used to. I'm all my little girl's got now, and she's worth anything. Anything. Bottom drops out of stock market. Wall Street in panic. Millionaires become well, paupers. Harry, 
Guess you didn't get caught, eh, fellow? No, Ted, not me. I'm putting my money where it's safe, right smack in the bank. It's going to buy Katie a real education. Governor declares state bank holiday. Franklin D. Roosevelt prepares for inauguration. Mr. Bailey, you look ill. I'm, I'm all right, Doc. It's just, just my savings. The money that was going to send my Katie to college, well, it was in one of those banks. Oh, no wonder you look sick. But I'll be all right, Doc. Everything will be all right. I'll manage somehow. I'll manage. War averted. Neville Chamberlain returns from Munich. Promises peace in our time. Well, Harry, they ought to be going good today. Oh, hello, Ted. Yeah, they're selling like hotcakes. Bet it keeps you busy hustling over at the journal. You said it. And I'm not quite as spry as I was, Harry. I sure could use a reporter like you used to be. Could you, Ted? I mean, would it have to be a man? Why not a girl? I, I mean... What are you trying to tell me? Oh, I, I don't want to take advantage of you because of old times, but, well, Ted, my Katie, she gets out of college next spring, school of journalism. And I thought if, well, she's at the head of her class and her professors sure, all say... Harry. Bring her around when she gets her sheepskin. You really mean that, Ted? tickled to have her working for me. Oh, Ted. Skip it, fella, skip it. Harry, and this, I take it, is Katie. Father's always talked about you so much, Mr. Ransom. I almost feel I know you. (laughs) Hope you didn't tell her what a slave driver I am, Harry. Um, Let's go right into my office. You haven't forgotten, Ted, what you told me last fall? Oh, of course not. Yeah, sit down. It's a long time since you sat in this office, Harry. Twenty-four years. But, Katie, uh, tell Ted, uh, Mr. Ransom, all about yourself. No, or... no need for that. Katie, all I want to know is, can you start to work Monday? She sure can. Oh, you won't be sorry, Ted. Katie will be everything I wanted to be and more. You'll see. Father, you... You darling, I... I don't know whether to blush or or cry. It's the day I've been waiting for all these years. Mr. Ransom, could you show me my desk where I'll work? Of course. We'll be back in a minute, Father. No hurry. No hurry at all. Wait, Mr. Ransom. Here, where I can talk to you. What's the matter? You look ill. Oh, I had to get out of there. I had to. And I've got to tell you. If I don't tell someone, I'll go mad. What? Tell me what? This job, I... I won't be able to keep it long. And Father, I won't be able to to keep the truth from him much longer. I know it'll kill him. Young lady, what on earth are you talking about? My eyes. Oh, don't you understand? I'm going blind. Katie. Oh, Mr. Ransom. No, 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 Katie. Don't let yourself get so... After all, it's only been a month. But in that month, I've gone from one eye specialist to another. And they all say the same thing. Hopeless. Then they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, but Mr. Ransom, what shall I do? It's getting worse all the time, and Father's bound to find out soon. You've got to find a doctor who can help you. As if there were any. Oh, I don't care about myself anymore. It's Father... Otherwise, I'd give up, resign myself Young to lady, it. Young lady, don't you ever talk like that to me. You've got to fight this thing through for yourself as well as your father. Why, you're young as spring with your whole life ahead of you. A whole life in the dark. No, no, no. There must be a doctor somewhere who... Say, wait a minute. Harry told me once, when he first went blind, that a doctor wanted to operate on him. He's never mentioned it to oh, me. Oh, I'm sure of it, though. And, Katie, you've got to find out who that doctor was. Oh, but if it was so long ago... It's a straw, but grab it. Can't tell. That doctor may still be around. I've gone to them all. Makes no difference. Find out from your father who he was. How? I can't come right out and ask then him. Then ask him without coming right out and do it tonight. That you, Katie? Sorry to be late, Father. 
Any reporter who'd watch a clock wouldn't be worth his salt. Oh, and Katie, Mr. Ransom says you're making good on all my promises about you. Oh, careful. You'll turn my head with such flattery. I'll have supper fixed in a minute. You know, Katie, I wish you wouldn't bother with such things. I could eat out like I used to. Mr. Harry Bailey, how many times do I have to win that argument? <laughs> all right. I give in. I'll have food on before you can smoke another pipe. Now then, is your choice of entree... Oh, oh, Katie! Oh, bump myself. <laughs> it serves me right for not looking. How'd the papers do today? A fine thing to ask when you practically made me retire. I don't really put in more than a couple of hours a day anymore. If I had my way, you wouldn't put in any. Oh, but Katie, you don't know how long these days can be. How empty. I wouldn't want to get completely away from my headlines ever. Father, uh... What was that doctor's name? The one who wanted to operate on you? Walton. But, Katie, I... I didn't think you knew. Oh, you, you... You must have told me sometime or other. Dr. Walton, you say? Yes, but if you're thinking... It's too late, Katie. He told me many's the time that I couldn't wait this long. No, it's too late. But if you hadn't waited... Uh, this uh, Dr. Walton... Is he still alive... Practicing? Alive, but retired. Oh. Retired about a year ago. He's come around a couple of times since and bought a paper. Why, Katie? Nothing. I, uh... Soup's on. It's so good of you to see me, Dr. Walton. You no longer have an office, so the, the only thing I could do was come here to your home. I... I'm glad you did, Miss Bailey. Very glad. Now, uh, tilt your head back a little more. Yeah, that's it. You can relax now. Doctor. I'd have known you were his daughter, even if you hadn't told me your name. What do you mean? How long has it been? Twenty-four years. And in all that time, I never heard of another case like it. Until this examination. Oh, you told Father at that time you could save his sight. Could you? Would you try to save mine? Oh, please, I'll pay any fee. No, no, no fee could make me enter an operating room again. Then... Let me finish. I'll do it, but not for money. No. I'll do it because I think it could be, should be done. God bless you, Dr. Walton. Wait now. I must warn you, as I once warned your father, there's about a 50-50 chance either you see or it's fatal. Fatal? If, if it is fatal, father will be left all alone. No. Thank you, doctor. I mustn't. But if you don't undergo the operation, you'll go blind. And in that case... In, until I do go blind, until I'm no longer any help to father... I couldn't let you operate. And, Doctor... Uh, yes, Miss Bailey? Don't ever mention anything about it to Father. Please. Katie, something's wrong. Something's worrying you. Especially these last few days or so. Won't you tell me? You, you're... You're just imagining things, Father. Now go right to sleep. Everything's perfectly all... Ooh. Katie, what is it? Oh, nothing. I, I, I bumped myself. It's nothing. Nothing. I, uh, I bumped myself. It's nothing. Extraordinary case, very. Might possibly be hereditary. Dead. He died when I was a little kid. As I remember it, he didn't see a team of horses coming and stepped right in front of him. Extraordinary case, very. Might possibly be hereditary. Father, what was that doctor's name? The one who wanted to operate on you? Extraordinary case, very. Might possibly be hereditary. Ouch! I bumped myself again. You're going blind, hereditary. Bump myself again. Blind, hereditary. Bump myself again. Blind, hereditary. Bump myself again. Blind, she's going blind, it's hereditary! No, no, Katie! Katie! Father! Father, what happened? I heard you cry out. I... I had a dream, Katie. A ghastly nightmare. I dreamt that... 
What, Father? Oh, what did you dream? No, no. I don't even want to talk about it. Think about it. Go back to bed, Katie. But, uh... Oh, very well, Father. Katie. Yes? What... What time is it? Wait till I turn on the light. Um, just about midnight. Yes, um, midnight. Oh. Good night, Father. I hope you don't have any more nightmares. She could see the clock clear across the room. Harry Bailey, it was just your imagination. Now forget it and... Four o'clock. Four o'clock. And Katie said midnight. It wasn't just imagination. The nightmare is real. Oh, Katie. 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 Mr. Bailey, I... I told you your chances would diminish with time. Yes, yes, Dr. Walton, I know. But you will perform the operation. Your chances are so slim. Why, I'd say they were only one in ten now. It still doesn't matter. I won't let you make up your mind on the impulse, Mr. Bailey. It's a decision you've got to weigh seriously. Don't you think I have? But such odds. One of the reasons the odds are so big against me is because no operation like it has ever been performed before. Isn't that right? Yes. And even if... if I lose out, it won't have all been in vain. You of medical science will be better able to treat similar cases if... if they ever occur. Isn't that also true? Why, yes. So that's it, Mr. Bailey. That's why you've suddenly come now, after 24 years. You found out. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you the reason why I came. Because Katie, my daughter, isn't dependent on me anymore. Now I've only myself to consider. I'm not sure you've convinced me, Mr. Bailey. Listen, Doc, you've got to believe me. I stood it for her. Well, I had to. But now I, I can't go on being blind anymore. The way things are, Doc, I... I couldn't go on. Oh. Well? All right, Mr. Bailey. I'll do it. Ready with the anesthetic? Doc, just one thing before before you start. I haven't told Katie, my daughter, anything. I understand. Anesthetic. Nurse, call Miss Catherine Bailey at the Daily Journal. Tell her... Tell her to get over to the hospital at once. Or she may be too late. Oh, Doctor, is he... Your father's calling for you, Miss Bailey. Katie, you've got to pull yourself together. Isn't there any hope? Well, tell me. Tell me. The surgery itself was a success. But it was too late. Many years too late. You'd better go in quickly. Katie. Father, you... You can see... Just as I pictured you, Katie. Just as I pictured you. Come closer. But... But the operation... The doctor said... I've just a little while. Minutes. But for those few minutes, God has given me back my vision. Oh, Father. Father. These are the happiest moments of my life, Katie. Don't spoil them with tears. It was worth it. Worth it a hundred... A thousand times over. How could it be? Just to be able to look at you. Oh, Katie. And and it isn't as though my death were meaningless. Doc says that now if anyone else should need the same operation, especially someone like... There won't be any risk at all, Katie. Father, you did it for me. You found out somehow. You knew, didn't you, Father? Didn't you... Yes. Ever since I was born, you lived just for me. And now... Now you're dying just for me. No man ever died happier. You're going to see with perfect eyes. And you're going to be all those things I couldn't be. 
all those things I dreamt of. I live on in every breath you draw, in every headline you write. Father! <gasps> Hello. Hello, Ted Ransom talking. Listen, I want you to stick this story at the top of the front page. And I... I don't care what you have to throw out. You get this story on page one. Yeah, and in all the editions. Here, Katie. Ready? Harry Bailey, 49, known to thousands as the blind newsboy and remembered by other thousands as a great reporter, died today. Because of his sacrifice, his daughter will be saved from blindness. I'll live on in every breath you draw, in every headline you write. The world is renewed in every generation by the ideals of youth. Young people are usually out to improve the way we oldsters do things. Maybe sometimes they're right, even if we hate to admit it. Oh, I'm not implying that we as parents have been anything like failures, but I guess we're all willing to admit there's usually room for improvement. And here's an improvement that we won't have to wait for the next generation to tell us about. There's not a family in the world that will not be helped by the expression of faith in God, by family prayer. Maybe that's what the world needs more than anything else right now. So pray together as a family. Make daily family prayer a family practice, and there will be true happiness and harmony in your home, because a family that prays together stays together. This is Frank Leahy saying good night, and God bless you. Before saying goodnight, we'd like to thank Vanessa Brown for her performance as Katie and Reed Hadley for his portrayal of Bailey. Our thanks also to Maurice Zim for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. Mel Williamson directed and John Ryder produced the program. Others who appeared in our play tonight were Dawes Butler, Charles Zeal, and Dawn Bender. Next week, our family theater star will be Hal Perry, the great Gildersleeve in The Windbag. Your host will be Bing Crosby. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.